We're going to be covering why you might be spending a little bit too much money on modern, how you can save more money in the short term and make more money in the long term. Let's get started. Hello, beautiful people, Zach here. So let's get right into this. I saw a bunch of people talking on Discord and Twitter specifically where people were sending out links to certain products that were up for a certain period of time. I saw someone retweet something and it showed up on my page and I saw a link for a Darkness Ablaze booster box for only $199 with free shipping. And I saw two, two different comments of people saying, copped two. Thank you. Is this a good price? Something along the lines of that. And I'm like, you just, you just tied up. Wait, what? You just spent $400 on something you don't even know it's a good price? Are you serious? It's Twitter. Of course they were serious. And no, that's not a good price. <laughs> so there's a great example of fear of missing out or FOMO, whatever you want to call it. So one thing that I want to say up front is know what you're buying. Know ahead of time. Don't buy something unless you either know, hey, I can get a refund really, really easily without tying up my money for a month or longer and going through a long, arduous process. Or again, just know the product. No, hey, this is a good buy. Hey, that's not a good buy. Hey, that's an okay buy. Well, it's gonna be investable long-term. Well, absolutely. I, I think Darkness Ablaze booster boxes, they'll go up in value over the long-term. How long will that be? Probably a long period of time. You're not gonna be able to flip it online in the next week, which leads me to my next point. Would you rather have 400-ish dollars tied up into two Darkness Ablaze booster boxes? Can you see I'm biased at all on this opinion? <laughs> Would you rather have money tied up in two Darkness Ablaze booster boxes for 400 bucks or would you rather have just one Scream promo and you'd be able to grade it for less than that dollar amount? What do you think is going to be the easier flip and what's probably going to have a better return on your investment? Now again, totally speculating here. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't guarantee you Scream promos are going to do better than Darkness of Blaze booster boxes. However, history would tell me, my intuition would tell me, all of these past market indices, every everything in me, that sounded weird. Everything says, everything says, everything screams, grab the screen promo. Eh? I gotta get this back on track. What is it that you see that is breaking records on PWCC auctions, on heritage auctions? It's individual cards, right? It's graded cards, it's the rarity of them. You don't see booster boxes doing that. You have some, uh, of course, certainly a base set first edition booster box. It, it, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm just gonna say, even if Darkness Blaze rocked it out of the park, which it's a good set, it's not, I don't think it's a fantastic home run slam dunk set, but it's a pretty good set and just a lot of people like it. A lot of people, this is anecdotal, but just from what I see people typing in comments, like my favorite set is Darkness Ablaze and that's totally cool, that's fine, but it's gonna take a longer time for that to get there if I had to give you my opinion. So again, would you rather have a unique artwork that's literally centered around art, exclusive Pokemon art, for the card, you can get it professionally third-party graded, or would you rather have a couple Darkness of Blaze booster boxes sitting in your closet for the next however many years? That's just one, one example. I see a lot of other comments saying something along the lines of, oh man, a $750 card, I can't afford that. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. I just saw you post the other day about your target trip. And I'm not saying you can't open cards and you can't have fun and you can't drink Starbucks anymore. I'm just saying if you were to really analyze or even just half analyze where is my money going? Where am I parking it in? What is the opportunity cost of me parking my money there? And if you're going to rip it open, that's totally fine. But that's another 20 bucks instead of buying that box you could have put toward your investment fund and say, I really want this $540 Pikachu screen promo. Okay, so instead of this Friday going to the Target release and picking up two boxes of whatever, that's 40 bucks right there, put $40 toward that fund. The next week, put 20 or $40 toward that fund. You see what I'm saying? And I know a lot of you know this, and I know a lot of you don't know this. This is why I'm mentioning it. Yeah, well, that's pretty boring. Even though I didn't know that at first, Zach, it's, that's boring advice. Yes, it is boring. I forget the exact quote, I'm paraphrasing here, but when Elon Musk was asked what it's like Working in a startup company, uh, something to that effect, when you, you know when the income is low or non-existent at all, he's like, it's like staring into the abyss while eating glass. And it took me a second to kind of digest that. I was like, what could he mean by that? That does not sound pleasant though. So that's the first key. We know that's not pleasant. It's probably incredibly boring, really difficult, and a pain. I'll repeat that, incredibly difficult, really boring and a pain. It's not gonna be this sexy, oh, bought this thing at Target for 20 bucks, I'm gonna sell it for 25 bucks, and then after this 
12.35% eBay fee, I'm gonna be about breaking even. Doesn't sound as sexy as that, does it? And again, it doesn't sound incredibly smart. Um, it, it takes that one extra step of thinking that again is a barrier to breaking through and making that progress on those cards. Just that one extra step, that one extra bit of research because I know a lot of people don't even know that the screen promos are a thing. Or do you know what makes it valuable? Why is that valuable? If you look at any other item in the antiques and collectibles business, there is so much money in that. So much. It dwarfs Pokemon. And I know you might be thinking, well, unique artwork, that's that's just an opinion. You can't base it off of. You absolutely can, though. Again, it's a promo. They're not mass producing these in all kinds of sets. And tell me, I go to a dentist. I don't know why I laughed at that. It's like, I go to a dentist, you probably go to a dentist. I I guess I was saying it in a way like, believe it or not, I go to a dentist. <laughs> I need to schedule that actually. I saw the the original Scream painting that he had. He had a copy of it, of course, in his, uh, the lounge. And I remember looking at that painting, not knowing how important it was or what it meant, just looking at it. I was like, that is really cool. It's captivating. And I'm not someone who, necessarily appreciates art in the in the respect that I, I don't just sit down and I, I don't go to art galleries and shows and that sort of thing. And me, just as like a normal dude going to get his teeth checked, I was captivated by that image. I was like, that's really cool. I had nothing else to stare at either, but I'm <laughs> kind of self-defeating my point here. But it was, it was a really cool painting and they did Pokemon arc centered around that. A huge, huge deal in the art industry. Huge deal in the Pokemon industry. This isn't going to be a video about just buying screen promos, I promise. But again, I just wanted to hone in on just one example to let you know. If you take that one extra step, even if it seems like a no-brainer to you, it's not a no-brainer to everyone else. Everyone else right now, everybody's calling them Timmy's and blueberries or whatever, whatever you want to call them. I like saying blueberries. I don't hear people saying that much. So you see all these blueberries, <laughs> you see all these blueberries running around, spending so much time and effort and sinking all this money into all of this modern product, which can be a great investment long-term or if you know how to flip, hey, more power to you. I'm just saying, if you take that one extra step, you're not gonna have to wait in line for four hours in the morning at Target to get a screen promo. You can go on eBay right now and buy one. Again, if you don't have the money for that, again, set up a little fun just every now and then or sell a couple products to get to that point where you can afford that. Man, I don't even know where to start when it comes to promos. Do a little bit of research. It takes just a little bit of time. Join some Discord groups, hop on Twitter, Instagram, whatever the site is that you like, YouTube, watch more YouTube videos, scour through eBay, look at what's recently sold, look at what's popular on Google. It takes a lot of work, guys. It's not super easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. So again, take the extra step. Take the extra two steps. I love it when people say, yeah, well, you know, I work smarter, not harder. It's like Gary Vaynerchuk says, yeah, well, I work smarter and harder. Now what? So be that guy. Go ahead, hustle. Use your brain too, though. Just think about where your money's going. Ask yourself, am I going to make enough money on this in X amount of time? Whatever that is for you. Do you need to make money back on this in six months? Do you want to hold it for six years? Do you want to hold booster boxes and cards and get certain cards graded? Do you have a certain niche? I feel like a lot of people have to niche down a lot more nowadays than when you did having to start off, right? Like when Pokemon was only five years old at the time, you only had so many sets to work off of. Whereas now you it's about impossible to collect everything. You're gonna have to hone in on something. So specificity is key. And remember that liquidity doesn't always mean a good investment. A lot of times it's the inverse of that. And what I mean by that is, yeah, well, these booster boxes, they're highly liquid. That's fan that's a fantastic investment. I can just offload it whenever I want. Maybe. So let's say that you can sell those booster boxes and let's say you can even break even after the eBay fees and everything else, which is unlikely if you're just buying a new box right now and then reselling that box, it's going to be difficult to make money on that immediately. But let's say that you break even at least. Does that mean it was a good investment when you held it for a month or two? Or could you have made money on literally any other card that you could have purchased at that time if it was a decent card purchase? You see what I'm trying to say? Just because this Shining Rayquaza, you don't see this on eBay super often, you don't see a bunch of these sold. It's not a highly liquid card. Does that mean that this is a bad investment? Let me know what you guys think. What do you think is currently the best investment in Pokemon right now, if you think there is one? If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos like this. And until next time.
invest in what you like. You can't lose at the end of the day if you invest in something you really enjoy. Unless, of course, you just want to make money, then make money. <laughs>